everyone. Welcome to our five-day question series for the Nabart exam. My name is Hansa Nora Sama, and I've done my master's in nematology in agriculture. And for today, I haven't really specifically chosen any uh, topics. So we'll just be discussing on, based on a few important questions for today. And um, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. And please do share with your friends, uh, whoever is giving the exam. The first question Dieback of citrus is caused due to the deficiency of A. Copper, B. Potassium, C. Zinc, and D. Iron. One of the main uh, deficiencies in citrus is this uh, dieback of citrus. And let's just roughly discuss some of the symptoms. So the leaves, they become uh, green and they become dark green, which are born in an S-shaped uh, twig. All right. So the main symptom is the leaves, they become pale and dark green. Okay, the next symptom, there'll be a slit in the bark of the tree. All right. And uh, they, in severe cases, there might be uh, chances of gamosis or gum exudates from the bark. So in uh, fruits, the fruits, they become really scarring. And in severe cases, there might be splitting of the fruits as well right so it's mostly common in um, a very young tree right so let's make it more clear for you all i've made this uh, table so in this table i've highlighted some of the uh, nutrients uh, and on the right hand right hand side i've uh, highlighted the symptoms right so first one nitrogen the symptoms may be light green leaves and plant color so the older leaves they turn yellow the leaves that will eventually turn brown and die so there is the plant growth is also slowed and there is a stunting and uh, eventually the the plants they mature early so in phos in the case of phosphorus the plant growth is slow and stunted and the older leaves they have purple discoloration. So whenever you see any uh, symptoms with the purple discoloration, it's always due to phosphorus and potassium. So the older leaves, they usually looked burnt and the symptoms are known as scorch. The plants, they easily lodge and sensitive to disease infection. Fruit and seed production will be impaired and uh, eventually it will be of poor quality. Calcium, the growing tips of roots turn brown and they die. The edges of the leaves, they root ragged as the edges of the emerging leaves stick together. And also the fruit, it also affects the fruit quality. And uh, with the, um, there is a main disease called the blossom and rot, which is usually caused by the deficiency of calcium. Uh, this is a very important physiological disorder, all right? So please remember, moving on to magnesium, all the leaves turn yellow and there is an intervenal chlorosis. So um, it's yellowing between the veins, right? So the plant growth will be sh slow and some plants may be easily infested. So intervenal chlorosis, suppose this is a, a leaf and these are the veins all right so in between the in between these veins there'll be a yellowing of the leaves all right so there'll be discoloration or the yellowing of the uh, yellowing between these intervenal veins so for boron abnormal uh, development of growing points Marismatic tissues with the apical growing points eventually becoming stunted and dying. Growers and fruit will also, there's an abortion of fruit as well. And the yield and quality is significantly reduced. And manganese, there is intervenal chlorosis again, just like um, magnesium. And while the leaves and the plants, they remain generally green in color. So remember in magnesium, they become yellow in color, but in manganese, they become green in color. And so uh, when there's a severe deficiency, then the plant will start to stunt and they will be um, slow in growth as well. So in molybdenum, the symptoms will frequently appear similar to nitrogen deficiency, right? But then the older and the middle leaves, they become um, chloratic first. And in some instances, uh, the leaf margins are rolled and growth and flower formation are also restricted. 
All right, so uh, try to remember all the other major uh, nutritional deficiency diseases. For example, uh, the main ones, uh, whip tail of cauliflower, which is caused by uh, molybdenum and chyra disease of rice, which is also caused by zinc. And there's a necrosis and um, black tip. These are some of the major diseases caused due to nutrient deficiencies. These are one of the uh, important questions which might come in the exam as well. Right, so... Um, before going to the uh, next question, please uh, comment on one question that I'm just going to tell you. Um, okay, so the heart rot of uh, sugar beet is caused by deficiency of which nutrient? So don't forget to uh, comment the answer for this. Moving on to the second question. The decomposition of organic matter in soil reduces A, acidity, B, alkalinity, C, salinity, D, both a and b so organic matter is it is the final form of decomposition and benefits of uh, organic matter can be first one water holding capacity uh, second nutrient supply third soil structure aggregation number fourth erosion prevention so water holding capacity since it makes the soil more firm and there'll be uh, less leaching of the soil the uptake by the plants from the soil will be better and for nutrient supply it has a high amount of uh, nutrients it gives a continuous flow of nutrients to the plants as well so soil structure aggregation since it makes the soil more compact and more um, aggravated so in that way uh, the permeability of the soil will increase which in turn um, helps in proper water holding capacity and so it'll have a proper retention of the so uh, of the water and in turn, it will help in erosion prevention as they won't, there'll be less leaching of the soil. Okay, before going to the question, let us discuss in roughly what are the different types of uh, soils. Okay, so based on problematic soils, it can be divided into, or it can be divided into a few classes such as like acidic soil, uh, alkaline soil, saline, sodic soil all right so acid soils they have a ph of less than uh, seven all right so ph is a potential hydrogen ions which helps in ranging uh, the acidity or the basicity of any solution or the soil the neutral is seven and the range is from zero to 14. if it's more than seven it is usually alkaline or basic if it's less than seven it is acidic Acidic soil, the organic matter that has been broken, uh, that has been broken down, uh, may be uh, due to acidic uh, nature. The solution or the amendment for this can be through lime application of lime, especially if it has COCO3 and mag magnesium. Right. So moving on to alkaline soil. Alkaline soils they have. They have a pH of about more than 8.5, and it is it ha it occurs due to the presence of minerals like sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. So the natural amendment or the solution can be by organic matter, by addition of organic matter, right? So for saline soils, saline soils are soils which are high in NaCl. So this may be caused due to the exposure of the soluble salt in the root region. So this can be amended by application of water, uh, for example, by leaching so that all the soluble salts will be moved out from the root region. Right. So the answer for this is B. Alkalinity as a decomposition of organic matter it reduces alkalinity in the soil. I made a small table differentiating the saline, alkaline, uh, and saline alkali soil on the base of pH, on the base of electrical conductivity, and on the base of exchangeable sulfur percentage. Right. So the uh, in saline soils the pH is less than 8.5, and alkaline it's more than 8.5, and saline alkaline it is uh, more than 8.5. Right, um, the EC is more than four, and alkaline is less than four, and saline is less more than four, and the ESP is less than fifteen in saline, 
In the case of alkaline soil, it is more than 15, and in saline alkaline soil, it is 15. So please rem try to remember this uh, small table. It's very useful. Okay, for the third question, the National Research of Wheat Science is located at, I would like you all to answer this question in the comment section. Okay, the question number four is based on a uh, propagation, all right? So bear is commercially propagated through number A, inarking, number B, layering, number C, tea budding, D, cutting. So there are various types of propagation, mostly asexual and sexual. So uh, in the asexual propagation so, or man-made propagations, um, all these comes under, like, come under inarking, layering, tea budding, and cuttings. The answer for this is tea budding, all right? And um, before going further, let's just discuss all of these terms properly. So the first, as you can see, uh, we have a sign and a stalk. Here in inarking, we cut a small portion. Suppose this is a sign and this is a stalk, five centimeter length and about two millimeter uh, thickness. We cut a small patch here. At the same time, we cut a small patch in the root stalk. Okay, and we bind them together, coinciding each other, and um, with the help of a polythene or an alkethene. And after a month of union, we cut the upper uh, section of the rootstock and the lower section of the scion. After the union is done, plant is healed, then it will form a new individual. The second one is. Uh, air layering okay so from this diagram it's pretty much clear what air layering is but let me explain to you so suppose this is the mother plant and we take the uh, bottom part of these stem and we put it under the soil right so after some time they will start they will start rooting uh, but naturally there's no uh, advantageous root they start forming and as you can see the new roots are forming and after it forms the the new stem it sprouts and we will put a stick near it we will tie it to give it a support and it will form a new layering branch layered branch and will form a new individual to make to keep it intact in the soil we keep a wire peg here as well all right so this method is very uh, uh common in litchi all right there are usually two types of uh, air uh, this one layering the first one being air layering and the second one can be crown layering So the third one is budding, all right? In the same way, type of grafting only where we have a scion and a stalk. Stalk is also known as a root stalk. All right, so here in this case, desired bud is taken from, uh, from the scion. We cut it out with the help of a budding knife, all right? And after cutting it out, we take the root stalk, we make a vertical cut on it. And after making a vertical cut, we uh, make a perpendicular cut on top of the vertical cut, make, giving it a vision of a T alphabet. After we cut this, the bark is laid open. We put this bud from the cyan and we put it inside, laid it inside. We tie it around with the help of a polythene, right? So after the union is healed, then we take out this, uh, the polythene. Sometimes we can cut off the upper portion of the graft so that a new branch may occur from this bud. So this is commercially used for propagation in bear. So this is a propagation method through cutting. This is mostly done in all the ornamental crops or vegetables, fruits as well. We take the terminal bud or the growing point, uh, point of the plant and uh, what we do after we cut the uh, apical or the terminal uh, portion of the plant, say about a 10 centimeter, 10, 10 to 15 centimeter, right? And what we do is that we put in a hormone rooting powder uh, rooting solution and we plant it and from there uh, a new uh, individual or a plant will continue to grow in the same way it's used it's a very easy way of multiplication of 
uh, of a plant or an individual it's used mostly in cloning moving back to the question berries commercially propagated through which of the following so the answer for this is t budding right so um i would like you all to uh read all the uh, different types of propagation methods uh maybe not in detail but at least have a brief idea of what uh, it's about and in which uh, fruits or plants are commercially propagated by which of the propagation methods. So the next question says, the disease late blight was responsible for the Irish famine in the mid 19th century. It was a disease of which of the following crop? The first one says cauliflower, B is wheat, C is potato, D is granite. So this is one of the, uh, one of the famous uh, diseases which is, which is also known as a late blight this is a disease of potato it's also a disease of tomato as well right and um, it creates a irish famine in the year of 1845 to 1846 right this is caused by a fungus called phytoptera infestans and uh, the symptoms are mostly on the leaves the stems and the tubers as well okay so water soaked spots appear on the leaves and the they turn purple and finally black in color all right and the white growth develops on under surface and the st stem eventually they break at these points on the surface of these points the plant they topple all right okay the lesions they usually appear as you can see in this picture in the lower surface of the uh, leaves and they they start from the tip of the stem, okay, where the dew is retained the longest. The tuber is characterized by irregularly shaped and then there are slightly depressed areas that can vary considerably from brown to purplish in color and of variable size on the skin. There are a couple of management practices such as if you use uh, non-disease uh, tubers, for as a seed or maybe you can uh, application of some fungicides or maybe using resistant varieties so i would like to ask you all to just jot down some of the resist resistant varieties comment it in the comment section and please don't forget to check out all the important diseases of uh, some crops uh, maybe just have at least have a rough idea of what are the causal organisms and whether it's a fungal disease or a bacterial disease or is it caused by uh, a vi virus so in the same way you can check out the pest uh, the main important pest of uh, different crops and vegetables uh, there are a couple of it's very hard, uh, impossible to remember all the diseases and pests but at least try to have a have an idea or make a point or make maybe make a table so that you can remember the important diseases the top important diseases the pest and some of the physiological disorders all right so if you just remember all of these points uh, briefly uh, it might it will be a, a great help so that even if the questions come from this plant protection area you'll be able to answer so that's all for today and i hope you all like the video and please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon thank you so much